My name is Henry Gudor and this is the story of how witches, popes, smelly Germans, and my raw sexual magnetism that attracts women from miles ruin my life. When I was a young king, the Pope gave me the okay to marry my brother's widow. After nearly 20 years of marriage, we were childless. Well, we had some daughter named Marge or something. She didn't count. The Bible says that if someone marries his brother's widow, they will be childless. And we were. Meredith didn't count. I told the Pope that this was a sure sign that the Bible was right, and this silly Spanish woman I had lived with for half of my life was just crazy when she said we were married. She rattled on about being my true wife, when clearly she wasn't. She didn't succumb to my requests to leave me when I gave her the bedroom eyes and then ate 17 roasted swans in a row to entice her. She just looked sick and started talking about the Pope. Who would think of him when I seductively licked my fingers and my arms in that spot on the floor where the meat juice dripped? And then licked the hand of the servant who brought them. Sexy, right? Anyway, then the Pope started bullying me. He wouldn't give me my divorce. Years and years went by. What a big butthead. After sending him many prank dispatches, I decided it was time to separate myself from that big bully. So I became head of my church, where I did important things like reform churches, stop those meany head priests, and have sex with Anne Boleyn. I loved her still productive uterus, I mean her, with all of my heart. She got pregnant, and I was so very excited. Then she had another daughter. I want to say her name was Elaine. Anyway, I was devastated. I assumed, however, that we would have sons soon. After all, someone had to carry on the raw Tudor sexual magnetism. She got pregnant and few more times and then miscarried. All we had was Edith. And Marge was around somewhere, too. Then I discovered the truth, I had been seduced by witchcraft. And Anne had been sleeping with everyone. Witnesses like the nearby dog and the deaf-blind attendant down the hall told me everything. I was devastated Emily probably wasn't even ours. She was probably Anne's brother's child. There was no family resemblance. She couldn't even eat three swans in a sitting, let alone seventeen. After her execution, I married my true love Juliet Sellers. Or something like that. She was beautiful. She had our son Edward. Then she died. It was devastating. Gillian was the only one who had a son, therefore I love her womb, I mean, her, the most. I miss her so to this day. Her eyes, that was some color. And her hair, that was brown or blonde or red or something. I don't remember. But she did wear dresses. Oh, that she did. And I think I talked to her once or twice. Beautiful memories. Then there was some smelly German who I was deceived into marrying. She didn't fall for the bedroom eyes, either. She must have been smelly and blind. My glorious rotund physique should make all the women swoon. They did so to my next wife. What's her face? Let's just call her my sweet little slice. She wanted my body and thought I was sexy and she let me know. She was very skilled for a virgin. I lucked out. Then I found out she was a dirty hoe and strayed on my her devastatingly handsome king. I had her killed. Denying that my milkshake brings all the girls to the yard is now treason and heresy since I'm in charge of the church. I just married some lady named Catherine. I don't know much about her. I can't see her behind my nightly 27 roasted swans. Anyway, gotta go. Big Mac attack.